Welcome, heathens and witches, to the Horn and Cauldron podcast. podcast. Yeah, so today is Kitchen Witchery 102 uh, Potions. That's right. Yeah, potions. Uh, potions. So <laughs> the uh is, is silent. The uh is definitely silent. Yeah. Um, because I'm reading this just as just as rapidly as you guys are learning what's happening also uh because i don't know what's going on that's not how this works anywho i've been john norgrove this has been julie norgrove this is the horn and cauldron podcast where we talk about witchy stuff but in like a dope space so no haters do peace you guys know the rules um but yeah if you're listening to this on your podcast network of choice we're just gonna do the business stuff out of the way if you're listening to this on your podcast network of choice don't forget to leave us a review so we know that you're listening i think we're at eight Right? Eight. Yep, we've got eight yeah. official So if you listeners. want to be number nine, I don't know, whatever, do that one of the things that I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, if you're on YouTube and you're looking at our beautiful faces, uh, don't forget to like this video, comment below about like your opinion on stuff, or just to be like, give me number nine. Uh, and uh, I mean, you can have a different number too if you want. Oh yeah, you can choose like, your own number. If this you is want like, a specific number. I assume, I assume that in... In sports, you get to choose your own number. I actually have no fucking clue, but uh, it's like sports. You get to choose your own number. So if you want to be a different number, tell us what number you want to be. <laughs> it's not written down anywhere and I can't remember anything, but it matters. So that's all that actually counts. Anywho, uh, what was I talking about? S subscribe to this channel, share us with your friends so we become other people's problems and we can start, you know, a small shadow cult of people who want to do peace. Or whatever yeah. the point and of this is. And learn about dope witchy stuff. Learning. Learning is the thing that the learning point of is this the, is. Learning yeah. is the thing, yes. Yeah. yes. My point is Shadow Cult of Peace. Uh, the shadow part is mostly just because it upsets normies, but that's a separate and missing tissue. Anywho, uh, let's get into Kitchen Witchery 102 Potions. Uh, as a refresher, the first episode of Kitchen Witchery we did, 101 Kitchen Witchery. I realize I might be slurring my words a bit. Uh, is episode 19, and that's Kitchen Witchery Basics, where you learn that kitchens and witches can be in the same room together. That's, no. Okay, we actually <laughs> talked about spirits and deities associated with uh, kitchen magic, yeah. different methods of yeah. kitchen witchery, and uh, common witchy ingredients. That's okay. We won't hold it against you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anywho, what's going on with... Kitchen Witchery 102. So, um... Not a great pour. <laughs> oh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna overflow. Don't worry. <laughs> this, this, if I have any superpower, it's this the power beer definitely over definitely looked like it was gonna overflow. No. And I was just like, you are dangerously close to my phone, my laptop, a power strip, and my work power strip. Ah, it'll be fun. <laughs> Guess what? Okay. Super drinking power. So, we're gonna talk about potions. Um, and, um... First off, I'm going to say that potions are basically liquids that when used have magical powers. And I say when used um, because originally I was going to say when drunk, but then I realized not all potions are actually drunk, uh, drank, um, drink. consumed, um, uh, quaffed. Yeah, quaffed, um, crushed, crushed, chugged. Sometimes you got to just crush potions, <laughs> yo. <laughs> Right? What is that? What is what is that? Uh, um, bloody what's his name from wrestling? Crushing potions? That orange man from the eighties? Oh, I don't know what you're talking Hulk about. Hogan. Oh, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. I don't. Sometimes he you was... gotta crush potions. I mean, he mostly no, who, wanted who does, to take who, his. Who, who says brother all the time? That's Hulk Hogan, right? Oh, um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Ah, I'm right. I'm right. Um. Okay. So I had um... a little bit of self doubt in the middle of that conversation. There, <laughs> that's gangster. I was just like, wait a minute, is it somebody else? I'm too drunk. To I was that just out. like, I don't. Are you talking about earthquake? Crush bro potions, brother. Earthquake is like a very well, not obscure. Earthquake the drink? No, there's a wrestler from the '80s who was called Earthquake, and for you, that would be very like um, insane. Because I was born at the end of those. For you to know yeah. about this wrestler. Um. Anyways, yeah. we're not talking about wrestling tonight. We're talking about potions. Isn't so, it the same thing, um, though? potions. Uh, there, there are like different definitions of potions, and um, they sometimes include include like salves and creams and stuff like that. And we're actually not going to be including that in this. Theoretically, so you can drink for the purposes of this podcast and the resultant Book of Shadows pages, the potions are going to basically mean liquids that you drink 
to obtain magical effects. Consumable potions is the short way of saying the 12 words that she just said. Consumable potions. Yes. Or food safe potions, because you can always use that potion as an ingredient, like salsa potion. Uh, I don't want to drink salsa, but okay. Yes, yes, it's consumable. Yes. In, 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 as an ingredient yeah. in some yeah. other I shit, I will my crush guy. some salsa. I'm sorry. I'm also, if it's it. good enough salsa, I'm going to drink that fucking salsa, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to waste time with chips. Give me all those tomates. I want them. I love a good salsa. It's same, same. Especially same. after that weird salsa we had two yeah, days it, ago. It was thin enough to be drunk. It was too. thin enough to be drank, but also disrespectful enough to the idea it was of salsa like, to never want more of. It, it was wasn't like bad. a single it just tomato was disrespectful. and like a single chili pepper yeah. like coughed on a liquid. Yeah, on, was, o- on oil. Yeah, on oil. It was yeah. very weird. Very like weird. Dehydrogenated vegetable oil or something like that. It was like a that. very it was, weird it salsa. Was, it, was, uh, it was not wrong. It just was a disappointment. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, it was so <laughs> disappointing. Oh my god! And there you know, were two when you're of like, them. You didn't do anything wrong, but you disappointed me. There were and two you're just of like, them. Ooh, that hurts more. And one of them tasted a little bit more like they had just like had a um, had like Cigarette a can. Man? Of, uh, no, it was like a can of tomato paste so that just good. like kind of farted on it. It was very disappointing. Yeah, those were disappointing so... salsas. It's okay. You don't know what we're talking about, and we're not gonna. Like, we're not gonna. We're not, we're not gonna, gonna put shame hate. The we're not trying to like put hate on some shit. It might have just been a bad day or the end of a batch or like a bad scoop. So yeah, yeah. But anywho, yeah. so anyway, uh, these are for drinking. Uh, I mean, yeah, we're talking about potions, yeah. and uh, they're and for consuming. With. And sometimes um, the word filter will come up, but that's P H I L T R. E. Um, and that word filter is generally used to describe a love potion in particularly older texts, like old grimoires will use. Well, the term that shouldn't filter. be filter. That should be filter. Like T-R-E is the tr sound. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes we say theater and theater is R-E. That should be theater. No. So, you know, <laughs> so if you see the word, you know, filter, them sweet theatres. <laughs> so if you see the word filter, that also means a potion, but usually a love potion. I definitely did not know anything about filter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I um, saw that, I would just assume that somebody didn't know how to spell something whilst also trying to clean the gunk out of their tap water. Oh, no. So you've definitely seen that word. A filter? And just not noticed it. Yeah. Mm. So potions historically have been used to cure illnesses, disease, gain immortality, cause somebody to love you, among other effects. Well, I feel like one of those things is not like the other. One of those (laughs) things will die alone. Well, I guess won't die alone because it's immortal. That's a different fucking thing. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about potions of immortality yeah. um, in, a, in a bit. Yeah. Um, so we're going to come back to that yeah, one. Quick TLTR, don't do them. They include mercury. It's not important. <laughs> um, so next. some potions are medicinal. Think like cough syrup. Yeah. Uh, and some potions aid your mental state. Like you could consider coffee a potion, really. Yeah. Um, Crush that potion Some aid day. your physical state. Like if you have an upset stomach, you can drink an Underberg yeah. and that'll help. Uh, some are... <laughs> Are poisonous, like most old potion recipes, uh, especially the elixir of life or mortality. But again, we're going to talk about that in a bit. Yeah. And some are a combination of these sort of things. Think uh, chicken broth. You know, it's a combination of chickens and regular ass broth. Uh, no, uh, chicken broth is both medicinal and to aid your was, physical state. That so. Was, that was- was the joke. No, I, I wasn't going to give it to you. That, There's yeah. literally a study, uh, several studies actually, that talk about how chicken broth helps you heal from colds in in like both a mental and physical state, as well as like helps to clear out whatever of, virus of, you're fighting. Of course, off. it does. It's warm. It's nutrient dense. It's easy to digest. It's readily available. It's already processed by being boiled into a broth, as well as you've had it since you were a <clears throat> young young child yeah so it affects the thing that you think that shit from the past matters more yes yeah no, no. <laughs> uh uh chicken broth or like especially like and like no sponsor but like campbell's chicken and stars because that's basically just chicken broth with tiny chunks of garbage in it um i love chicken and stars by the way fun fact i'm not really a fan of chicken soups 
Yeah. I don't particularly like chicken broth. That's why our broth that I make here for the house is Beefy. like a kitchen sink broth yeah. where we put all of the bones that yeah. are not fish-based bones. A couple of faucets, one porcelain dish. It, it's fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, of course that hacks the mind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For me, that's actually tomato soup, but that's neither here nor there. Mm. Because tomato soup is the most superior form of soup. If you have a question, if you have an issue with that, uh, fight me in the streets, I guess. Right? Yeah. Is that what we're doing with this? No. No, no we're not doing this. I mean, okay. maybe if you maybe. really want to. I don't know. Whatever. If there's somebody out there that wants what, to fight you in the street, what, maybe that's what, listener number what, nine. What smooth liquid is your go-to sickness smooth liquid? Gross. Well, because soup includes chunks. Yeah. Yeah, it does. But tomato soup, no chunks. Um, Favorite sick soup. Honestly, it kind of changes. But like for me, it's probably pozole. That's Ooh. not a smooth soup, but that's okay. The, the also, broth the broth based on pasole, chicken broth. What's up? No, if it's pork, then it's not a. It's not always chicken. Oh well, you just said pasole. You meant pork pasole. Eh. Pasole eh. carnitas, eh. carnitas pasole. Anyway, whatever so the fuck. not only can pork uh, broth is awesome, by the way. <laughs> not only can broth be um like a medicinal, be like a potion, sure. but you can also have potions that are made of like tea or juices, where they're infusions, yeah. uh, a liquor or even a fermented beverage, a tincture, pretty much anything you can drink can yeah. sort of be a potion here. Quick clarifiers on this. Okay, so a tea is shit steeped in water. A juice no, is a shit. tea is specifically tea leaves with water. Technically, any plant detritus steeped in water would make a tea because of the way that tea should properly be defined. But, yes, but, but, but those are that's infusions. All leaves. An infusion would also include fruit because you can inf infuse fruit in water. Yeah. So uh, I would. this is the argument that I would make. Tea is plant shit in water, like leaves and sticks of shit. Right, a juice is squeezed plant shit. An infusion is plant shit that includes the fruit parts. Liquor is plant shit infused, but with alcohol instead of with water. Fermentation is plant shit fermented by sweet, sweet yeast. Tincture is plant shit soaked in alcohol for so damn long that it becomes glue back again. Sure. You know That's what I'm not saying? actually the definition. Those are the definitions of versus all of those infusion, things. But it is, okay, it is. It is. So it makes sense. Anyways, in the <laughs> 1500s to the 1800s, it was really common to see business people offering potions for a variety of effects. Uh, and if you like potion business people are like accountants, both. Nice. <laughs> You're like, hey, my books seem wrong, and I can't afford my taxes. And the accountant's like, you know, what might help right now. A little bit of, a little bit of dark I mean, tea. I mean, so, <laughs> y yes, actually. So um, that's totally true. That totally would work. Yeah. So, like, not only did you have like an apothecary, uh, apothecary, apothecary. That go. word, all oh, I always say it wrong. Um, oh, I so, can't spell it. So, or not only did you it, have, not only did you have it. those places where you would like specifically go to a potion maker, and even like some uh, like doctors would offer potions, uh, but. But like a lot of people, like you could go to like a village herbalist or a midwife. You could go to like your village witch um, or even prostitutes and courtesans. They were also pretty well known for potions. But the thing is, is especially as time went on, it was very popular for people to have a side gig where they sold potions in addition to their regular business. What's up? So, you know, you could go to like your local crafts person and you might be able to get potions from them as well sounds so, like a crafts apothecary it sounds like uh the side gig business was also rampant in the yeah. old in so the what, old what's times. up with old timey millennials having a side gig <laughs> to survive right guys yes yeah, basically yeah, yeah. what's up uh yeah. for prostitutes and courtesans it was actually pretty popular for them to sort of move into potion making as their uh, looks or their body sort of gave out on them and they were no longer able to really perform sexual acts uh, with a, with as much frequency. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, that makes sense. Yeah. They also were a huge part of um, women obtaining contraceptives and herbal um, ways to not be pregnant. Yeah. 
Yeah. Just sort of like in general. Yeah. Um, and potions are super if they, common. If they're telling you historically it wasn't a thing, they're fucking liars. You know what I'm talking about. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should probably pay attention to the fucking news. It's a dark time right now. Um, but yeah, yeah we don't his... want to say it because it's going to hurt the algorithm. But yeah, we, we, know, can't, we can't upset the lords of algorithm. Those guys are assholes. Yeah. But if you know what we're talking about, um, don't believe the lies. Stick to the truth and the facts. And the facts are, you know, some people are going to be slightly less people because of assholes. Yeah. So yeah. what's up? So I guess potions are um, we're not just common like in the real world, but they're also very common in folklore, in urban legends yeah. and in literature. They're basically everywhere. So if you've ever heard of Spanish fly, that's a popular, very popular potion in the Middle Ages. Um, Shakespeare had at least three plays where potions played a major part in them, uh, in particular Romeo and Juliet, because Juliet drinks a poison potion um, because she thinks that Romeo is dead and then he's not. And then ah, um, it is uh, purported to be that flying ointments for witches were sometimes drunk as opposed to being uh, like a balm or a salve. And the thing is, is we don't really know what the flying potions that they were were. were specifically and how they were specifically being used we can kind of only guess um, but that is a um is something that we think happened uh the little mermaid drinks a potion alice in wonderland drinks potions several a bunch of potions she should probably read labels before she drinks potions but that's gangster <laughs> um yeah there's a bunch dr. of dr jekyll lore. and mr hyde yeah, potion, that's a potion classes are in Harry Potter yep. and basically every video game you've ever played. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as well, well as oh, like, what do you need to like games. drink some stuff, drink a potion and then heal? Except for Resident Evil Village. Because you instead, use herbs. No, no, you just wash your hands with potions. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, Resident Evil spray. Village. Yeah. Regular Resident Evil, eat herbs. Resident Evil Village, you just wash your hands yeah, in you potion. Just wash your hands. And then you're all safe now. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely the like the silliest a, edit and change, but well, that's okay. It, it's just sort of a pro. A Sometimes product. you gotta give hands, my guy. Well, it's give to hands. me every time I saw that, I was like, it's like they're putting hand sanitizer on. <laughs> oh, how nice the panini. Hey, so, sometimes sometimes you gotta lotion up, my guy. That's how you don't crack, right? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. So some famous potions um, that we can kind of talk about. First of all, is uh, the Holy Grail, and um, this one is that's actually no. Um, it was probably not a specific cup. It's a big cup. Um, but the Holy Grail wings. Not not the Monty Python Holy Grail. That's totally different. Yeah, guarded the by actual a rabbit Holy or Grail some shit. probably evolved from a drink that was used for um, practitioners like priests and you know soothsayers to get into the right headspace to commune with gods in ancient times, um, and was not a singular cup. Although these cups were generally very lavishly decorated. Yeah. I mean, you basically had one cup and you carry the, it with you everywhere. The modern term for that would be crunk. Those cups were crunk. I think that you're using that term wrong. Crunk <laughs> cups, bitch? You don't know what I'm talking about. So um, this drink was, was called uh, Halma or Soma and actually dates back to like the proto-Indo-European -Indo times. So for our... Our, our handful of listeners that have been listening for a while, that's like... You know how much we love them proto-Indo-European times, <laughs> You know right? how much I love Back talking about old Indo Europeans stuff. were very pro, you know? Uh, that's actually before most modern... Uh, or, well, modern, I guess. Before, like, ancient religions of Greece and the Norse uh, pantheon and even the Celts were sort of around. So they originated from the yeah. proto-Indo-Europeans, yeah. and particularly the Scythians, um, with this particular thing but this this halma this soma was something that was not only found in europe but was also found um throughout asia and um even throughout the americas because um cannabis grows in a lot of different places and was most likely the main ingredient in these drinks yeah. um in addition to sort of like regional specialties that would include opium or other herbs resins and usually used milk or wine so the holy grail but that milk was fermented <laughs> also if you ever had fermented milk don't yeah. <laughs> so the holy grail was actually probably a potion and not actually a cup itself yeah or it was i don't know what a lady what, what was the point of dan brown's books the holy grail was a lady oh i don't know i never i didn't read that what i, I don't know oh they're pretty good yeah i never read them 
Oh, no. Yeah, no, they're pretty good. I think the Holy Grail was a lady and that was the genealogy of Jesus or some nonsense. I don't know. Whatever. Couldn't it's, begin. To it's, tell been, you. it's been like a bunch of times since I've read that. So, yeah, no, I never read it. Um, <laughs> another thing I never read, um, although actually I've read parts of it now um, to do research for this is actually the oldest reference to potions. And that is a uh, it is it is a poem called The Lay of Gudrun, and it was written prior to 1000 BCE in Scandinavia. So this is like almost 3000 years old. It's one of the oldest written things cool. that we have in like old Norse and Scandinavian culture. And it happens to be about potions. Well, not the whole thing. It's quite long, but there's part of it that's about potions. So uh, Gudrun was the wife of Sigurd and um, he was killed by Gudrun's brothers. Distraught, she searched for Sigurd's body and when she found it, she didn't want to live anymore because she was very upset because her brothers just murdered the guy that she was you know, married to or about to be married to. Um, and she didn't want to live anymore. So instead of killing herself, um, which would actually been fairly common in that time period, she wandered the land until she met this chick named Thora and stayed with Thora and her, they're like royals. So stayed with Thora and her father, the king for like three and a half years, hanging out, doing girl stuff, I guess. Uh, it doesn't doing really say. Stuff. Um, I watched that movie. What's up? Damn. It sounds like it would be fun. Yeah. So Gudrun's mother was named is Grimhild, and she told her sons, so Gudrun's brothers, the murderers of her husband, um, they told her sons that, or she told her sons, they had to pay Gudrun a wergild, uh, a wergild, sorry, um, which is a man price for his life. So essentially that uh, a wergild is uh, a price that you pay to someone when you have... Um, well, destroyed or killed something in this particular case. And in most historical cases, this is having to do with killing someone. Yeah. Um, so you could basically kill a guy and then give like his family some money to compensate for that, like life insurance sort of. Um, and then you'd be cool. That's exactly what that is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Gudrun's mother told her sons to pay their sister a price for the husband that they killed. So Gudrun met up with her brothers and she did not trust them for obvious reasons. And her mother made her a potion of forgetfulness. And the poem, um, the poem is actually super cool and beautiful, but it says this about the, the potion. A draught did Grimhild give me to drink, bitter and cold, I forgot my cares. For mingled therein was magic earth, ice cold sea, and the blood of swine. In the cup were runes of every kind, written and reddened, I could not read them. A heather fish from the Hadding's land, an ear uncut, and the entrails of beasts. So her mom got wild making this potion. Yeah, I mean, that just sounds like broth, but I... I it kind of is. And it sounds like, like kind of like a seafood, like a surf and turf broth, which frankly, if you're having to deal with a bunch of assholes, I mean, a surf and turf broth really get you fired up, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it, it, it's a little like a like a cocktail. So after this, it, really, the reason why I'm telling you about this is so I could read that poem. But like after this, just so you know, the TLDR of this story is that. Grimhild told Gudrun that she was going to give her all of her father's wealth, sort of in payment of the husband, but also sort of prophecy. Um, and that uh, Gudrun would need to marry uh, Atli, who was actually Attila the Hun. Um, unhappy, because she didn't want to do this, because she was like, I already had a husband, but my brothers killed him because they're dicks. Um, unhappy, she goes to um, Atli, Attila the Hun, and she promises that she will kill him. Uh, Atli dreams that not only will Gudrun kill him, but that she will also feed him his sons as revenge for killing her brothers. Well, that seems a bit complicated, but okay. It like all ancient tales, it certainly is. Yeah. Um, and that is the TLDR of that. Yeah. So <laughs> that is. So I guess don't <laughs> kill your wife's brothers, or have Attila your the Hun might fuck your shit up. Um, no, <laughs> she really kind of messed his shit up. Is you know, she's just gonna fuck everybody's shit up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, that's the oldest it's potion. Very, it's that very, we really it's, have it's very girl writing. power. It's just like fuck with my shit. 
I'm gonna fuck up like a bunch of motherfucking shit. Actually, the poem itself is pretty rad. Um, so I highly recommend um reading it I'll because read. it's very cool. It's very interesting, and it is sort of this like it it is it, it, it rides this really particularly interesting line of um actual people that existed and events that we think actually happened and sort of like gives information to that a little like Beowulf because um, scholars do think that Beowulf actually existed. Um, So he's a wolf made out of bay trees. Yes, exactly. Uh (laughs) (laughs) That's not true. Don't listen. Yeah. So um, the elixir of life. Okay. The elixir of immortality. It's sometimes used with or in or as the philosophers in concert with or standalone or another name for or some bullshit philosopher's stone exactly yeah Yeah. so the elixir of life or immortality i'm really using those sort of interchangeably because throughout history they're basically interchangeable she means the elixir of life or the elixir of immortality yes like we're calling immortality the elixir of life (laughs) that's insane that would not be how english works i mean maybe it is so basically the elixir of life not only gives immortality but also cures all diseases which kind of makes sense because sweet sweet disease of being alive (laughs) don't drink mercury it's just poison is motherfucker, but it's fine. Whatever. The concept of this elixir, this potion, if you will, yeah. um, actually exists across basically every culture in the entire world. Humans in love trying to very seek out similar being ways. And as far as we can tell, this goes back as far as 3000 BCE. So we're talking 5000 years. The idea of. Um, the elixir, uh, an elixir yeah. that gives you immortality. Drinking some shit exists. being immortal. Yeah, totally. Exactly. Um, however, it was incredibly toxic. An emperor in the Ming Dynasty died like immediately after drinking some. Like, yeah. D- like, like d- he crushed it and then it crushed him. Yeah. So it was typically Crush, made take of- Take a forever nap. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. So it was typically made from ground up jade, you know, the stone, yeah, uh, cinnabar, yeah. which is uh, sort of like a wood, uh, gold, hematite, more mercury, rocks, rocks, sulfur, m- and arsenic. Rocks, poisons and rocks. Okay. And so that's listen, particularly that's, the China. That's just side poison of with sandpaper in it. <laughs> Yeah, basically. Yeah. So, and that's, that's just a little bit of wood to make it smooth. (laughs) Yeah. That's just the, um, sort of like list of ingredients dating back to the Chinese version of this elixir. There are other versions throughout the world that, um, have a variety of different things. Although most of them generally include ground up stones. Um, by the way, please don't do that. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. Don't do that. Hey, hey. (laughs) If you're watching a shitty TikTok and they're saying, ah, put some rocks in your water, then you have a magic rod or walk water. Don't do it. Yeah, please don't do it's, it. It's Oh, my God. It's so dangerous. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to talk more yeah. about things to you're put doing or rock not water. Put in. You know what you do? Have water. Put a rock near that shit. Exactly. Not yeah. over. Just near. Yeah. Rock water. Yeah. That yeah. shit's just very unsafe. Holy cow. Yeah. Like, let's all be smart and safe based on physics. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So okay. most of these, uh, most of these like really old timey potions, like this elixir of life and potentially the potion from the Lay of Gudrun, um, really um, have a lot of things in them that you shouldn't be ingesting. Yeah. You know, so this one had literally everything on that list that I said, you probably shouldn't swallow. Yeah. Oops, all poison. I mean, the one the one thing that I can think that maybe is an exception is gold. And that's just because, like, I have a gold crown. So obviously, that's well, in my mouth. and like, but like, if you're like, a, if you're like a <laughs> fancy lady, you can go to like a fancy lady restaurant and get like a gold leaves on a yeah. on a meal. You know how it's like, what is this? A regular cheeseburger? When I put gold leaves on it, five hundred dollar cheeseburger. You know what I'm talking exactly, about? Exactly, exactly. So, like, you can probably um, do that if you're, like, being fancy and yeah. shishy and shit. But the elixir but... of life is particularly bad at this, like, it, it, and is hilarious to yeah, me. Yeah, all of the things you said are very poisonous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fucking literally don't fuck with mercury. Um, hematite is uh, diamagnet. It's a magnetic substance. So, um, secret time. If you eat magnets because your intestines go, like, woo, back and forth, right? Like an S curve, uh, 
if that shit gets separated, those two S curves are going to pinch together and it's going to punch a hole in your intestines and you're going to bleed internally. Don't fucking do it. Yeah, it's a horrifying thought. It's a horrifying thing. Yeah. Um, it's the reason why, uh, why those magnets, don't those, those tiny, yeah. cute bucky balls are no longer exist. Uh, mercury is poisonous. Silver is poisonous. Arsenic is poisonous. Jade is a fucking rock. Don't eat sandpaper. Uh, cinnabar is a bit of wood. So that's probably okay, but it's probably poisonous wood. I think cinnabar wood. is wood I think it's treated. actually quite poisonous yeah. wood. Well, it's not treated. I think it's just poisonous ass wood. Oh, maybe. You know, like redwood is technically poisonous wood. Mm, yeah. That's why bugs don't eat. Yeah. It's just poisonous to you. You just don't eat wood. So that's yeah. chaos. Um, so yeah, I like honestly the things that you just said, gold is the most like molecularly stable for you to eat. <laughs> and yeah. frankly, what are you fucking doing? Trying to flex some motherfuckers? That's stupid. Yeah. But don't the thing that. that's especially funny to me is that for an elixir that's supposed to make you live forever, it's <sighs> made throughout the world of ingredients that are definitely going to kill you. It's gonna definitely make you live forever until you board that fucking TJV, you know? The the TGV, the uh the bullet train uh, French bullet train the bullet train to death zone yeah because I you mean, just ate heart poison <laughs> I mean maybe the idea is like if you can survive this you yeah. can live forever that's but also maybe it's like death. you can live forever in the afterlife you can live forever <laughs> right up until you're dead because that's just happening guaranteed you just ate a bunch of arsenic yeah that's yeah. stupid now you know? kind of related to this elixir of life is uh florida water florida and before water. we talk about florida water don't drink it it is not for drinking um i actually ordered some florida water and um, that's why this is coming out a little bit late uh because it was a little late in getting here but we have some florida water um to um open and i have not smelled florida water in ages and you i don't think ever have um so florida well water, i can smell it inside of the package but that's a separate and distinct issue yeah so florida water um, was first created in uh, New York City in 1808. And it is uh, supposedly the same um, formulation as it has been like always. Forever. Yeah. And it's like a clone. Yeah. So it go says, ahead and, and smell it. It says Florida water, clone New York. It's a New York clone. It smells a bit. Like calamine lotion is is that the name of the lotion that you use when you get? Um, oh, it does kind of smell like, like uh, calamine lotion. When you lotion. get what is what is yeah. that called? Chicken pox when you're a kid. Yeah, yeah. You use that pink shit. Yeah. It's called calamine lotion, right? Yeah, you can also use that when you have like uh, mosquito bites. Bam. Really? Yeah. It <sighs> stops the itching. That's why you that. use it on on uh, on chicken pox. Hmm. I just assumed it was a lie. So no, because chicken pox itch. N um, yes, I just assumed it was a lie because if we tell you that a thing cures itchiness, you'll believe it unless proven otherwise. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. always believe your own mind. It's very powerful. Um, so Florida water is yeah, a, that smells is quite a, fantastic. Though. Is a cologne water, so you don't drink those. Yeah, no, this it. isn't for drinking. Uh, now, the name Florida Water uh, Florida. refers to the Fountain of Youth, um, which and which is because the Fountain of State Youth was... of Florida has the Fountain of Youth? Yeah, supposedly. Mm. Yes, yeah, so in the Kennedy Space Center. It's called a spaceship. You fucking leave this bitch. It's Fountain of Youth. No. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, so that's why it's called Florida water because it's sort of the fountain of youth. So this isn't, this wasn't ever really. Dude, this bottle says for external use only in like three places. Yeah. Yeah. They're very yeah, yeah. serious about you not drinking this poison. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's because it was not originally marketed for you to, um, you know, consume. Yeah, but, don't consume. But we know that there was a lot of people in the 1800s trying to get you to drink things, potions in particular, that you probably shouldn't it's be drinking. It's a very drinking. pretty label, though. Yeah, it's really let's cool. See if, let's see if the camera will focus. Focus. Yeah, for focus those of you focus. that are listening to this on a podcast network, you can just Google uh, Florida, Florida water, water. Yeah. and you can see the pictures. Um, there is one main company, which is uh, like Hopefully Murray that was and, in some focus, my guys. Murray and Layman. 
Yeah. Murray and Landman is the main company. It's a very beautiful bottle. I wish that this was like a glass bottle. Yeah, it's um, but plastic. They... I grabbed it and squeezed it and was just like, what am I? Hold the Hulk? <laughs> nah, it's plastic. Yeah. So. so Florida water is hugely popular in American folk magic, hoodoo and voodoo. Um, and just sort of like any sort of general American type of magic is very like popular for florida water um and it smells nice I yeah like the way it so smells, it's used so like as it. a cologne as a bath ingredient so you could like pour some in the bath and take a bath it smells like florida water it's supposed to help um a skin toner an aftershave oh, yeah you can also put it like on your temples or smell it to get headache relief um mm. it also awesome. is supposed to ward off colds yep. um many people for magic mm -hmm. sides of things use it for offerings uh to cleanse, to attract good energy and luck, and also for aura cleansing. So this is like an all-purpose baby here. Um, and it's really cool. Um, so Florida water is definitely something that, uh, because we had to buy three bottles to get it sent to us, um, definitely going to be using and uh, just kind of checking out. Plus, it smells real nice. It's very refreshing, particularly as a, like, getting into the hot months kind of scent, even though we just had, like, a record cold snap. But that's its own thing. Um there are other brands that make Florida water and um, you could also make Florida water yourself. Uh, but the main company that makes it this Murray and Landman, um, they're, their ingredients are a secret. They don't really tell you what they are. However, most people have, most people feel that it is made of a combination of bergamot, neroli, lemon, cloves, cinnamon, rose, orange flower, jasmine, and balsam fir. So Florida water can be used for a huge variety of things, just not inside of your mouth. Yeah. Or other mucous membranes. Don't put it in your ear. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. I don't, we shouldn't have to say this, but if something shouldn't go in your mouth, you know where it shouldn't also go inside of any other hole that you have inside <laughs> of your body. So keep that shit for external use only or to just like smell or put in like a cup or some shit. Jesus. Yeah. Hell. Yeah. Right? So I definitely look forward to eventually sort of taking the things that we really like about this Florida water and sort of making our own yeah. Florida water. Well, it seems quite liquidy, so it'd be good in like a like a cleansing spray bottle. Oh, yeah. It's basically stitch. like like essential oils in vodka is basically how yeah. you make Florida water. Take essential oils, put in vodka, shake um, and that'll do it. So we're going to talk about making potions. So um, to make potions, there's a couple of different sort of categories that we are going to run through. And the first of those that we're going to talk about is base liquids. And your base liquid can be the whole thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But for the most part, potions generally include several ingredients. So for base liquids, you can use water, you can use juice, wine, beer, mead, any other liquor. You could use honey teas. You can use syrup. You could use oil if you want. Uh, soda. Why not? Uh, broth, as we've already talked I mean, about, essentially. Just water with yeah. So, yeah. And uh, sparkling water. Water with carbonation. So you can use all of those things as base liquids. However, only use charged water, like moon water or like sun water or... Um, like uh, gemstone water, if it is safe. The best practice for moon or and sun water <laughs> is to use an unopened water bottle. Uh, that way you don't have any contamination there. Preferably glass. Yeah. <coughs> um, uh, plastic bottle releases toxins yeah. when it goes through thermal shift. Um, so it would be best if you could get like a glass water bottle or, um, something to that extent. Um, yeah. You also want to drink it immediately. If you have moon water that's been sitting around since last full moon and we're at like, you know, getting towards three quarters of a full moon. <laughs> hey, yeah. guess what? That moon Don't water drink is that for. water. That moon Don't water is for water. blessing shit that doesn't go inside of your fucking head. Yes. You yes. Know? Also, like we said, with gemstone water, if you have water that you want to infuse with uh, the power of a gemstone, please don't put the gemstones in the water. Yeah, put that shit near Many the gemstones water. are toxic, and some gemstones will just completely dissolve if they're put yeah, in water. Or just flake off a tiny piece, right? It's sort of like um, 
Think about it this way. If you want to put a gemstone in water, how do you feel about putting some fiberglass in water? Tiny strings of gem. So yeah. Yeah. like so, crystalline structures can can like abrade and flake off. It's not worth your health or the risk. So be safe and smart about things. If a spell asks for gym water, then you know what you do is you get water in a cup and then you put those gyms like in a fucking circle around that cup. You know what that's not doing? Touching the cup. Because that shit's yeah. safe, right? Like, let's all be safe and do peace so that we, we can, you know, like be better than those that are trying to like take away current human civil rights because as holery. So, yeah. And I know that you may have seen uh, like particularly posts on social media saying that like certain stones uh, are safe to be put in water, no. but don't um, take the risk. Don't take guy. the risk. Yeah. No, um, it's just safer not to Correct. Um, for a huge variety of reasons. So just put your stuff around the potion. So, um, F uh, for ingredients, uh, do your research and only include items that are non-toxic. So no hematite, guys. Yeah. No arsenic. And also have no adverse effects. If you're making a potion, I mean, don't use stuff that you're allergic to. But also if you're looking for, you know, um, particularly cool ingredients, like if you saw, oh, belladonna, that's like a witchy herb and that does what I want. Belladonna is toxic. So if you're putting things together, make sure that they make sense. You wouldn't mix baking soda and vinegar and then drink it. So think about that when you're sort of thinking about ingredients yeah. to combine to make yeah. a potion. And, and if like a particular ingredient is like the thing that you're trying to do, much like those rocks, put that shit on the outside during assembly. Right. Like maybe what you're doing is you're making your seltzer water colored to match the intent of the spell. And while you're doing that, you got it in a ring or bowl full of shit that you want to use in the spell. But that like isn't gangster to eat or consume. So that's what you're doing. Right. Remember, you don't have to put it in the water and directly consume it intention is you know it's it's that intention is nine tenths of the yeah, law yeah yeah <laughs> well not only that there's also there's also yeah um there's also things that just like don't really mix so um years ago i was at work and i did not have enough time off to take time off from work and i was trying to be i was trying to get better and this was like right after like airborne and emergency were like huge Started and everybody hot. was drinking it was so them. hot back then it was it was actually it really was it was so yeah, no, i got joke. like a box of emergency and again not not related no hate on emergency that's just i don't even remember i might have even had airborne i got one of those packets yeah. and um Some sort of powder or pill that's supposed to make yeah and i was at work and i was like you know what sense. it's gonna make me feel better i'm gonna not get sick and uh i drink like four of those throughout the work day while i was at work and one of the major ingredients of the particular one that i had gotten was vitamin a like as a vitamin because those things are like vitamin fortified and i that day learned out learned what vitamin a poisoning was mm. uh because i definitely gave myself vitamin a poisoning and i had to go home anyways um so even something that seems to be fairly benign can't like can cause adverse effects so sure. make sure you're doing your B due banality diligence. is directly related to concentration and volume right like um like a little bit of cinnamon is okay a bunch of cinnamon is a cinnamon challenge and stupid and too much cinnamon is poisonous any chemical or atom or molecule at enough of a concentration is poisonous and deadly so be smart about this shit do your research and if you're concerned i just i know that like everybody's gonna want to make rules about shit and like do that thing that humans do where they're just like we got we gotta have structures and systems or what fucking bullshit right but like what if you put water in a bowl and then you poured that bowl into a cup and then you just put all your herbs and shit in that bowl and you did a bit of a ritual and then you drank that cup of water. You know what those herbs didn't do? Go in the fucking cup of water. Right? So like intention is important. The structure and the system is important and you need to protect yourself and be certain. And if you're not certain, 
err on the side of safety. Does it mean that you can't include Amethyst in the spell? No, put that shit on the outside, right? But don't take the risk to consume that Amethyst. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because then you're just going to tear yourself up and you're going to get hurt. And the goal here is to, like, not get hurt for obvious reasons as well as because we need more cool people. And if you're listening to us right now, like, there's a definite chance that you're a very gangster and cool person <laughs> so like let's try and outnumber normies that are hate filled and shitty right so like let's be very safe about this stuff it's error on the side of safety and caution maybe have a couple of glasses of water next to that bowl instead of just one if if you know if you feel you need a bit more zhuzh for a lack of better words. Yeah. Right? So anyways, um, yeah. for ingredients, not only do your research, make sure that there aren't any adverse effects, um, but on the positive side, choose whatever ingredients you want, really, uh, based on their magical property or use um, like the property of colors for magic or a personal connection yeah. that you have. Like if you particularly have a personal connection to root beer and it makes you happy, like why not? Use that. Um, you can also add some zhuzh with uh, food coloring or edible glitter again please make sure it is edible before you put that in your drink um as for stones and metals i feel like we've definitely talked about this um so i'm not gonna go over all that again because we've talked about it a few times um but don't put them in your thing yeah but don't put them in your thing i know that we're really hammering this home in this episode but the amount of people that i see particularly that are posting on social media talking about putting stones or metals or things in in like teas and magical drinks and then drinking them is really crazy and not only that straight there are there are people out there in this world who think that drinking bleach is going to cause them to be cleansed and pure um so, so we have to make a constant and concerted effort to, do this. to say don't drink bleach don't drink shit that's toxic don't drink shit that's poisonous and to be completely frank and i sh- uh, holy shit should i not have to say this if you do not know for fucking absolute certain that it is okay for you to consume do not consume that shit right you know what you can do you can put it next to the shit that you're gonna consume you're gonna have a you're gonna have a root beer Put that rock next to that root beer. It's fine. Put it over here, right? Same Print out so, a picture same of the rock yeah. and tape it onto your cup yeah, of root Yeah, tape it onto the cup of root beer. Yeah. Paint a picture of the rock on the root beer. Whatever you got to fucking do, right? Because, again, it's about the intention. We're trying to do peace. We're trying to be fucking safe, right? And what we don't need to do is spread bullshit. Like, oh, you read a book or you saw a TikTok or whatever, and it says that this shit's safe. Like, are you going to take that risk, my dude? Right? Is like, is that worth your health? Yeah. No. Err on the side of safety here. We, like, we are the minority. We have to fight against the chaos right now. So, like, let's try and be safe and not make poor decisions about stuff. Yeah. And if... For some reason, this does not immediately hit home that you should only put food stuff in a beverage, which is obvious. And you have a question, a concern, or a doubt, then hit us up on social media. Hit us up, you know, on the website. We got an email thing there that you can fill out or whatever. And we will tell you what the fuck is going on. Because if you're like, hey, I want to make this tea, but I want to include a fucking you know, uh, uh, like, like Majorman or like Rosemary in it. Then we're going to be like, yeah, Majorman, (laughs) margarine. That's not butter. You know what that, you know what that is? It's like butter, but it's not butter. (laughs) It's just flavored oil. (laughs) It's just flavored oil. Yeah. It's not great. Yeah. You think it's, it's not butter. Yeah. You think it's butter, but guess what? Not butter lies definitely not butter. uh what what yeah. is what is there saying can't believe it's not butter can't believe it's not butter you can trust me um that stuff's so gross yeah uh you know but like at the same time if you're like what about this rock i'm gonna say no rocks guess what yeah. TLDR, yeah. no rocks. Uh, and I do have a full list of correspondences that I can cross-reference. So if you have something in particular that you're interested in or have a question, I'm more yeah. than happy to answer if that. You're like, Whether hey, that's about potions or about something else entirely. Hey, I want to do this thing. I'm trying to look up this correspondence. What would work best for love shit? Or what would work best for, like, success? 
or like calm or whatever. Like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be like, hey, what are you trying to do? What's happening? Let us help you out. Yeah, right. The point of this podcast, the point of this community, the point of this strange witchy coven is to to all help each other, right? We're a community. We're trying to help. We want to spread proper information and like cancel out, cancel out this weird accent, cancel out as much of the misinformation that exists out there as possible because there's a lot of misinformation and it's not their fault, right? I'm not, we're not, I'm not, no hate. That's not what I'm doing here. Do peace. You know my rules. But like, we just want to make sure that people are being safe about this. And it's one of those things that like, dude, I swear like once a week, I'm seeing some shit where people are making unhealthy witchy suggestions. Right. Yeah. And it's not about like what kind of witchiness you're doing. It's not about your beliefs or some shit like that. That's not what I'm talking about. Right. You everybody can do and believe whatever they want. Right. Like if you've been listening to us for a while, you know that we're very open. Like just like do your thing. We practice incredibly differently. But like be safe and be certain about the shit that you put in your body with regard to any sort of magical practice, especially, but honestly, even food. Um, but like, it's just, it's, it's very high risk and, and we don't want to see nobody get hurt or sick or nothing like that, you know? And when you're doing potion stuff, it's real easy to be like, ah, like this shit is associated with whatever the point of my potion is. But like, you know, Maybe skip jade and just go with green food coloring. <clears throat> that shit's both cheaper, healthier, not going to hurt you, and also significantly more rational. So yeah, yeah. let's be rational about our magic so that way we all continue uh, to persist in our practice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah. moving on to the yeah. fun stuff. Psychotic um, rant aside. <laughs> that shit just, it's one of those things. We got to be careful. You know, yeah. so when you're mixing your potion, um, you can you don't have to do this, but you can um, stir clockwise, which helps to grow or receive. Mm. And then you stir clockwise to remove or banish counterclockwise. Yes. Mm. Clockwise to grow or receive counterclockwise to grow or banish. Nope. I said that wrong again. Do it again. We're, we're going to do take it from the top. Time. Hey, we're not All right. editing this. You it's stir too much work. clockwise to grow or receive and you stir counterclockwise to remove or banish. Yeah. Hey, those are also written on the screen. I know. Yeah, I know. Okay, cool. I was Gangster. literally looking also, at it. Also, uh, now it. you have to use the word windershins. Windershins. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, my favorite way to say Counterclockwise is also called Wittershins, so yeah. you can do that. Or and anti-clockwise, which sounds significantly more science fiction to that me. That sounds hateful. Anti-clockwise. <laughs> what, what is this? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? And you're like, oh, 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 I don't know about that. Yeah. No, but I like Wittershins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when you make the potion, focus on your intention. That's kind yeah. of like the easy peasy one. Or wunderbar shenanigans. Uh, yes. And when you're <laughs> drinking that's your not, potion. That's not true. I just made that up right Nope, now. I'm just I'm moving sorry. on. Yeah, Wunderbar uh, shenanigans, <laughs> Wittershins. No, I'm just you know? moving on. So, moving on. Yeah. So when you're drinking your, so when you're about ready to drink your potion, you can strain your potion if desired. It might seem more witchy to drink a potion with like a bunch of leaves and stuff in it. But if you don't like drinking things with flecks of stuff in it, strain it. Like yeah. I have a friend who doesn't gross. like, who doesn't like boba pearls. Uh, it's gross. So when it's she me, gets boba friend. tea, um, it's not, uh, you're not the one I was thinking. I, of. I, 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 um, I so when they was. get boba tea, um, they don't get pearls, but I like the pearls. So I get them. So, uh, you, you know, know what I don't <clears throat> want? Chunky drinks, <clears throat> thick drink. That's called a smoothie. Chunky drink. That's an unblended smoothie. Motherfucker. Why do I want to drink that? It's gross. I want those boba pearls. Give it to <sighs> me. Oh, this boba pearls. Give it to me. I want to chew on them. No, it's cr it's chaos. You know what I like better than boba pearls? Aloe. You can get aloe chunks in boba. Uh, you know what? I'll drink that. I'll drink that aloe chunk aloe drink. No, you will not. You do not like it because it has I don't. I in don't it. like it, but I'll drink the shit out of it at a convention, and that's mostly because by that point in time, I'm a level of drunk <laughs> and unsober where any moisture provided to my body is beneficial, and aloe chunks. You know, tre bono. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I don't want so, chunky ass drinks. Yeah. Now, hey, this this came up at work today. Do you do overnight oats? 
This isn't a sponsorship. I just have a, a, a thing to say. They're gross and you're wrong. <laughs> I had an argument with uh, with Nate. He was like, he's he's very he's a big fan of the overnight oats and it's gross. It's gross. Shouldn't drink them. Shouldn't drink your oats. I don't like it. I don't want to drink oats, but I don't care if they're overnight. I don't like it. Okay, um, so storing your potion. <laughs> um, so if you, so one, if you made so much that you can't ingest it all, um, or if you're just making it in batches, um, practice food safety. So use or freeze um, quickly and discard it if it smells off. Yeah, put a date so, on it and then just give it a short amount of time. Yeah, so like pro tip, if you have a potion that you particularly are like happy with and you want to like freeze some to like use it more, just like freeze it in like little ice cubes and then you can defrost a certain number of ice cubes at a time. You just sort of like crush that 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 small amount of potion yeah, to help you do it. that thing. Yeah. Yeah, so that's another way that you can uh, do that. And if you want to do a shortcut, imbue a pre-made drink with magical intent, and now it's a potion. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Cha-ching. Well, you know, if you figured out what the stuff is in the potion that you want included, you could probably embed that in resin with some, like, wires and metal and shit, you know, like, uh, what is that stuff called? I that don't, I don't resin know. and stones and metal stuff. Um, just like resin casting. Oh my God, no! There's a specific term for this sort of magical practice. Uh, you have oh you have organite, a, organite, organite. That's like a new, uh, like new magic thing in you, new magic thing. Um, organite is a uh, resin with metal and stones and such. In yes, to, but that's uh, not to, to a lock in a spell. Listen, potion. <laughs> no, was, no, hold on, bear with me. You're not catching up. Um, or you're too far ahead. One of the five. But if you if you may if you like constructed a thing or poured the ingredients you wanted in like a circle, right? Then every time you open a uh, soda or a beer, set it in that circle. Oh charge yeah, charge that shit, bounce out. You could use coasters as like a means to do something like that too. Dude, potion coasters, that shits. Especially if you go out to Fucking like a genius. to like a bar or potion like a pub, super they usually give you those like cardboard sort of coasters that have yeah. like beer logos and stuff on them. Those bring are a- usually made of like a cardboard like material. So bring like one of those home, and you can draw like. You could draw sigils yeah. or write words. I was going to say, bring a pen to the bar, like a like a pencil or a pen. I mean, you could do that too. Zip, zip, zip. Give it a little bit of magic, magic circles or whatever. Yeah, and boom, charge every beer you have at that club. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like uh, a couple of days ago, I had like a bunch of gardening to do, and um, when I set up the space that I was going to garden in. You know, I did that little magic circle up in the upper left hand corner. Yeah. You know, so like, yeah, uh, every task you you do can be magical. But just like, you know, it's all about intention again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. So what is your experience with doing potions? With doing potions. Or using potions. Well, I mean, like... For me, it's again, I guess I live in a place of like hyper intention where like it's not really about necessarily the ingredients. It's more about like if I'm in a place where I'm trying to like do a thing that I'm just like this beer, you know, it's it's you know, it's the to like TLDR. It's like this beer is for beer. You Mm. know what I'm saying? So like, like add intention to the drink. Um, but at the same time, I guess like when I make a liquid offering in general, I tend to put a bit more effort into like specifically what I'm doing, whether it's like the first drop or like, um, um, like including a special ingredients or something to that extent, like making a cocktail, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm doing like when I'm drinking cocktails, that sort of a thing. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, for, I like, c- like potion TLDR as a consumable. Uh, I really kind of don't participate in that as like, uh, I'm creating a potion for me. It's more like I'm drinking this with intent. Mm. So I would, from my perspective, I wouldn't consider that a potion, even though like technically it's doing potion shit. Yeah. Right. 
Like if you're if you're like, I'm gonna crack this beer and pour it into my pint glass and then have this beer and this beer represents some shit to me, then like that's a potion broad uh definition. But for me, it's like it's not a potion. I'm just drinking this beer with intention. Yeah. Uh same thing, different words, right? Uh so like for me, that's the uh perspective there. But like when I think of potions, I do like um, I do like spell jars pretty often. I almost always have at least one spell jar. And those usually like, have liquid in them when yeah. you do them. Oh, right? I always yeah. do them with liquid, 100%. <clears throat> so that's like always rotating and active on my altar. And it changes based on like how old it is and like what I'm doing and what I'm changing. Um, and I guess I definitely do the like... The like, um, I'm doing some magic, so I'm gonna like make a cocktail to pair with it. Mm, like, like, that's an interesting way like, to do make potions. a cocktail to pair with the spell. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not, mm, I'm not really like, uh, like, uh, doing research to see what matches, uh, <laughs> correspondences kind of wizard man. That's like, like, the, I respect and love the effort, and I'm also generally like not that far prepared for a spell. <laughs> Most of the time, I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna draw some tarot cards, and then I'm like, wait a minute, what if I did this also? So I don't have time for that. I just gotta like on the fly stuff. <laughs> so that's a separate and distinct issue. But like, yeah, so like I'll do a cocktail and like drink half of it or drink like. Or like drink a bit and then pour some in my offering cup. Oh, that's the my my tiny first warp flight Star Trek mug. I have like a tiny coffee mug that's like one and a half ounces. Um, but so like I'll pour some of that in there first, yeah. or like after I have a drink and then in there or whatever as an offering. So I guess like technically that's a potion because it's directly associated with an intention and spell. Um. Yeah, I don't really do potions, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, that's not really a thing that I do. For me, magic is a bit less consumptive and a bit more physical. Mm -hmm. And that's not like a, like a woo, my way, somebody else's way sort of a thing. But it's like, to me, the drink and the food are an offering, a uh, sacrifice of energy. It, they represent the pure solar energy required to produce that thing in that state at that moment as like raw, like, like ergs of power mm -hmm. for the thing and less of like a mode of transportation with regard to magic, I guess. I mean, I, but I would also say that like most of the time when I'm doing like any sort of larger spell, I'm generally drinking like an alcoholic beverage. Yeah. Because for me, alcohol is like a magical motivator. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, it's a shamanistic thing as a practitioner of like shamanistic forms of magic. Um, what I would call motivators um, or like human expressions of intent. Um have power in so far as they're able to manipulate um, and directly affect the way that you interact and perceive with reality to more clarify the intention of the thing that you're trying to do because intention in its linear and flat form is like sort of less expressively yours than that intention after it being processed. Uh, there's a thing in, in Kung Fu where it's like, it, it, like after you do a thing a thousand times, it becomes yours. Um, and so for me, it's that this is the like shamanistic magical shortcut to allow me to get to a place where I can access the pure form of the intention of a thing that I'm trying to do. So it's a potion insofar as it accomplishes a task, but it's not a potion insofar as I'm having to engineer the ingredients. I'm simply taking advantage of the side effects. Mm -hmm. if, if it makes sense, I'm a little cart before the horse, potionly yeah. speaking, kind of. So like, that's kind of the way that potions work for me. Um, so yeah, I mean, like 
conceptually, I love the idea of a potion. Um, and like as a cook, I guess I make a bunch of sauces and those are potions. Those are potions <laughs> for pain because I love fucking hot sauce. Let me tell you what. Um, uh, Uncle Norgrove's uh, barbecue sauce burn you on both sides of the equation, as it were. Uh, it's it's very good barbecue sauce and it's it's rather sweet, but that shit has a has a deleterious effect on both ends <laughs> uh, it, on purpose, by the by. But because uh, I love spicy food. But um, yeah, I don't really do potions, I guess, is the thing that I'm trying to say in an elaborately complex way. A very elaborately complex. Yeah, quite yeah. over, over much. <laughs> it's fine. It's for you. What's up? <laughs> uh, potions for me are some of like the earliest magic that I can really remember. Is making. potions? <clears throat> Even as a little kid, I would like go and find herbs from the garden and mix them into potions and then I would feed them to my dolls. Um, most of them were made with things that were poisonous so I couldn't I mean, drink them and I, mean, I didn't. There's a functional part of that that sounds horrifying. Yeah. Feeding feeding stuff to dolls, but that's yeah, fine. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. I would also feed them to uh, the fairies. So I definitely have a lot of like potion making uh and i really enjoy the correspondences of things and like sort of the magical properties of them that is not to say that i only do that there are times that i don't do any of that and i just sort of like chaos magic it and it's yeah. whatever it is that i have on hand uh yeah, but i really yeah chaos I, magic. I, I really like the like sort of preparation of looking at these things thinking about these things and what their like correspondences are and like what people think you know they kind of like mean like why does rose mean love in basically every in basically every place that there are roses like why does that always mean love mm -hmm. there are some that are different that are you know different between different places obviously but like i really well, like that kind e of to thing. me that's even more interesting when like 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 as an example it would be like for us gold means this but for some other people gold means something yeah. else like to me that's always very interesting because it shows how like consciousness forms the like intentive magic the like intentional magic yeah 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 and also like how thing. different cultures interpret different things yeah. too i'm very fascinated by that but for me like looking for the ingredients and sort of researching and making the lists associated with like the keyword that i'm going for with the spell like love or money or luck or whatever the thing is um that is sort of like a meditative thing for me and that definitely helps with the magic because it kind of like puts my mind in the right place i have a lot of lists <laughs> of like uh purposes for a spell that have like these are the colors and these are the stones and these are the metals and these are the herbs and these are the animals and these are the deities and these are the other things associated with them so it's something that really helps me and and potion making definitely kind of goes into that but like in the morning like most mornings i have tea and i'll usually mix um some herbs with some tea um and a lot of times i do that in sort of a potion making kind of way because i want to imbue or embody some ideas behind a bunch of herbs because i have a ton of herbs um both for like funsies and also for like medicinal purposes so i definitely use that for like potion making as well sort of like in the low-key sense um but i also have potions that are not drinkable potions so like i have a little um sort of like cleansing room spray if you will that i have made um for before i do tarot or any sort of magic stuff and it's sort of inspired by uh aphrodite and um that is a potion because i put all those ingredients with intent and it's in a special bottle and the bottle has like a little charm on it and when i use it i it helps me get into a certain state of mind so there's a lot of that kind of going into the potion making side of things um so i really actually like doing potion making stuff uh but i really really enjoy kitchen Kitchen witchery. I do a lot of kitchen witchery. It's probably the form of magic <coughs> that I actually do the most. Um, but I do it on an everyday basis because I consistently have to make food and eat it and drinks and drink them and that sort of thing. So I incorporate it into sort of my everyday thing. So sometimes the tea that I'm drinking in the morning is just because it's a particular flavor that I wanted. And sometimes 
the tea that I'm drinking in the morning has a specific purpose that I am trying to sort of bring more into my day. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, uh, yeah that all makes sense. I understand. I, yeah, I don't know. I just... I guess maybe I'm just like my, like I'm just a bit more chaos. It's like <laughs> well, that, like that's it's, the it's, a, of it. it's a thing where it's like it's very gangster, but this seems like a bunch of uh, knowledge work, and I'm just <laughs> yeah, I'm just not. I don't, I don't even yeah, know. well, that's I'm not gonna waste the sunlight on remembering shit like that. Is that it's it's whatever works best for you, um, and I think that the two of us are a really great way to sort of embody that because we both do magic. We both do a lot of magic, and but we do it very differently. Oh my god, so differently. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I guess you know, like you you've you've heard me talk about it probably like a thousand times. Um, but like, just because we do shit differently doesn't mean that it's not equivalently useful, powerful, effective, and important. Yeah. You know, like that's the point is that like we can all believe, practice, and work and worship in our own ways, and like, like don't let somebody else's drama like bring your shit down. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> like, all right, so we like do some different stuff and we talk about what we're doing like all the time, right? And like she does shit her way and it's it's completely not the, sh it, 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 no sense to me, right? It's a bunch <laughs> of details, not the way that I work. And I imagine that I describe shit and it's probably just absolute fucking chaos. Yes, it is. Yeah. absolutely chaos yeah no yeah no structure it's very it's very it's very like ah. but sometimes there's very rigid structure oh but so. also yeah i sometimes yeah honestly sometimes sometimes it seems like chaos and then after i'm describing it i'm just like mm, oh, look at this i did the same thing every time non-intentionally for several times ah I guess that's just how that worked out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm learning as fast as you guys are. So, um, yeah, it's a very different sort of yeah, way of yeah. practicing and doing things. And um, like, that's OK, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like we can all do things differently. And, you know, I, I you know, I'm going to say if you if you partake in the potions uh, let us know, like, kind of what your potion thing is or, like, what you do. Or if you just, like, d like do potions or don't do potions. You know, like, whatever makes, like, whatever sharing you you're comfortable with. But, like, yeah. Like, this is, to me, this is very interesting because, like, conceptually, I love the idea of potions. Uh, like, probably 99% of that is because I'm a huge Dungeons & Dragons fan. <laughs> Uh, that's, I'm, just, I'm just being honest, right? It's because like concept, like I just, I love like, like I'm a big gamer and, I, and I'm a big like D&D &D guy and all that. So I'm just like potions, ha ha. Uh, but like in actual practice, I just like, I have no connection to proper potions <laughs> at all, right? Like a beverage is a tool, sure. Like a wand or a, a rock, but like, it's just, I don't know. It's not the same. It's not this engineered thing for me. Yeah. You know, so the idea of engineering it is is rather fascinating. Yeah. You well, know? you can kind of even uh, like some things that I sort of like just thought of as, as you were talking is like you can kind of make potions out of uh, like stuff. So like um, I don't remember who I was um, talking to, but this was ages and ages ago. Uh, and this person was telling me like, oh. It's not a plane flight for me unless I have tomato juice. I only drink tomato juice when I'm flying on a plane. I never drink it otherwise. I don't even do Bloody Marys, but I always have a glass of tomato juice on a plane. And and it doesn't matter where they're going. That's just the plain thing. So you can kind of even take potions to there too. So like, you know, do you have a, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, what do you like to eat when you're sick? Like what's your favorite sick food? But it can kind of be like, what is the potion that you have? What is the thing that you drink uh, or even eat really um, when you're trying to put yourself into a particular place? 
you know, um, like what is your tomato juice on the plane? That's really like sort of using the That's idea <laughs> of, of potions, yeah. right? You're yeah. drinking that thing to do a particular thing. And that's the only time that you drink that thing. Mm, I see. I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you know, totally. Like totally. at my work for the holiday party, um, there's a coworker that I have and she only drinks champagne at the holiday parties. Mm. Only because she feels fancy and she's dressed up fancy. So she wants to have the champagne because it's fancy. Right. So that's another way that you can use even even and especially mundane things. Yeah. Um, as potions. Well, yeah, I, I guess, you know, I don't know, like I, this may or may not sound insane, but like um, like off the cuff and thinking about it that way, like for me, magic is like the zhuzh in the mundane, the sparkle amongst the sunlight, right? Like, I can do a big bloody ritual. I just literally got done with one that took like three weeks and it was a bunch. I'm exhausted and that's awesome. It's my Monday. Um, <laughs> But <laughs> I'm going into a weekend uh, very tired and I work on weekends. Um, But like... It's for me, I, I'm very magic in the mundane. I'm very like, what are you doing? Cutting up some carrots to make a salad. Every slice has meaning. Every piece of carrot is laid with precision and that precision represents focus and intention, you know? So like for me, it's very like, like magic and practice and power uh, exist in every tiny iota of existence every footfall every knife slice every calorie consumed every erg of sunlight beating against your skin um but like at the same time for me it's not really about the like physical shit and i love the correspondences because every time we i we you know she reads them and every time we go over like the spells and every time i'm making a book of shadows page um like i get to learn a little bit more about where stuff relationally connects but like i don't know it's just to me it's more about it's like i can i can spend a i can spend a bunch of sunlight on doing a spell or I can add a little bit of extra sunlight to every action I make yeah. to reinforce all of the intention I have. So that way, everything I do is like this grand work, this grand design, yeah. you know? And in addition to that, you know what that does is boosts a shitload of confidence, which is, you know, pretty fucking important. Something we pretty much all need is millennials. Pretty much everybody needs and not millennials. is more confidence. <laughs> you know what I don't need? More confidence. Ciao. Um, <laughs> that was my elbow and wrist popping. Holy shit, that hurt. Uh, but like, yeah, you just, I don't know. For me, it's, 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 I live in the sort of like mundane magic. Yeah. You know, that like every action you take, every, every gorge you break open and you drink the juice from is, is, part of the ritual of your existence you know it was yeah. a rafiki reference for those who are paying attention uh not important uh, but yeah so i mean i guess that's kind of the way that i look at that yeah yeah but i like the idea i don't know potions are one of those things that are like very cool to me yeah. You know, it's very cool. It's, Except when it's, I make a potion and ask you to drink it and you're just like, ooh, gross, get that away from me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I don't like chunky beverages for, I don't know, fucking, in my opinion, obvious reasons. Whatever. Right. So, like, I don't want to drink chunky shit. And, like, also, if some shit is an unappetizing color, like, I don't want to put that near my fucking head, man. Like, I was alive in the late 90s and early 2000s. When health beverages were like, what if you drank this? And then you drank it and you were like, oh, my God, w uh, that was the grossest shit ever. What's happening? <laughs> yeah, I've had weird organic health food root beer. You know what that tastes like? Vomit. 
You know what I've seen people do when they drink it? Vomit. I don't want I don't want that in my fucking face. <laughs> yeah, I had to clean this shit up in my own ass house <clears throat> plus getting a tattoo. It was a weird time. <laughs> yeah. It's a story for another time. But um yeah, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where for me it's like less correspondence and more intention. And so spells are spells fall in the same category as like watching a person draw a person. Right? Like I do my art. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see like the art and shit that I do. It's very um, abstract. And I love doing art and I've done art forever as much as I don't really much consider myself like artistic uh, with regard to those things. But I it's it's that thing where like there's I have a fascination when you can watch somebody like draw a human face. I, I'm entirely disconnected from that skill, like perfectly. I, I have no understanding of how you can do that. Uh, it's the same with like correspondences and, and potions. Like it's so beautiful and so fascinating. And I, I, I got no clue when they're just like, we got to mix these and this and this and look at this magic. And I'm just like, that's quite gangster. I don't know what you just did or how you just justified all that. But like, I understand that the things you put in it are healthy. So I'm willing to drink it, <laughs> but like, I don't know about it. I don't, I don't know about what you just did. I don't know nothing about that. It's just not the way that I process information. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. I got no connection there. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if you do potions, what's up? That's gangster. What's your favorite potion? Yeah, yeah, we'd love to hear from you, like how you feel about potions, what your experiences are, what your experiences are, yeah. and uh, you know all of all of that good stuff. Yeah. I would say maybe favorite potion, green tea with mint. Okay. Yeah. Because I drink that whenever I want to like calm the fuck down. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, and I love green tea with mint. Yeah. Yeah, that's like my go-to tea. Yeah, yeah, it is. It yeah, is. I prefer green over black <clears throat> or red, even though I do love a good red. Yeah, well, for me, I don't know that I really have a particular favorite potion. It's just sort of like whatever it is that I uh, want to. I'm intending uh, to do. Yeah, want yeah. to do. Although um, it may may quickly be becoming this uh, this potion spell that I wrote for this podcast. So, <laughs> Isn't that good? It's very good. Nice. It's very good. Um, so first, we're going to go ahead and talk about some spells. Uh, and these are spells that I have, I we have written, uh, mostly me. Uh <laughs> 100% her, don't listen to the lies. Yeah, she just asked um, me for technical acumen or rhythmic suggestions yeah, because so, I'm a good writer. And that's a separate and distinct issue. <laughs> I can make anything sound fancy as shit, regardless of my knowledge yeah. about what so that shit is. So the royal is. we uh, yeah. wrote these spells. That's so right, these are not her. connected to any she, particular yeah, she, practice. She's the best, that's her. Um, and this first one that I'm going to hit you with is a potion consecration spell. So first of all, only use this with food safe ingredients. Uh, we don't, we're not going to go into it. We already been there Obviously. a few, few times. Yeah. So use this simple chant when you make a potion to consecrate it. Um, so after combining all your ingredients, uh, stir your potion clockwise to attract or counterclockwise to banish and say, powered by the essence of its parts and my intention, this potion manifests upon ingestion as above, so below, as within, so without. Now you can drink your potion and yeah. it's been consecrated. Chaboom. You can add in extra flowery stuff if you want. And um, if you are doing. Yeah, if you like want to like call up a deity or like a yeah, particular yeah, yeah. blot or whatever. Or if you're not actually works. combining any ingredients and you're just turning a mundane everyday sort of ready to made drink in there, just sort of modify it however you see fit. Yeah. Um, and then so you can actually use that with the potion that I wrote for this episode, which is an all purpose magical horchata potion. Um, so to do this spell, you'll need five cups of cold water, one cup of rice, rice is for abundance here, one cup of fresh or frozen strawberries for luck, one quarter cup sliced or chopped almonds. Almonds are to enhance magic and particularly the, the results of a magical spell in this one. One stick of cinnamon and cinnamon in this instance is going to be used for healing. Uh, one tablespoon of lemon peel to enhance spiritual powers. 
three cloves for protection, one half teaspoon vanilla extract for love, and sugar, syrup, or honey, whatever your preference is, to taste, and that is for attraction. So this is just like sort of an all-purpose potion. We've got abundance, we've got luck, we've got magic enhancing, we got healing, we got spiritual powers, we got protection, we got love, we got attraction. It is good vibes only. All good vibes, all great vibes. Yeah. Um, so to make this, basically you're making horchata. And if you have not made horchatas, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take a large container, um, like a pitcher or a bowl, whatever floats your boat, um, and pour in the water. Now, add all the ingredients in the order above, visualizing and imbuing with intention each ingredient as you add it. And then let it sit overnight. Uh, you can place the container so that it can charge by the light of the moon and the sun, uh, particularly early morning sun, just because you don't really want this to be sitting out for super long. Um, that's a great way to charge it and having it being charged by the moon and the sun sort of balances and enhances those energies. Um, and then use a blender to liquefy the ingredients, either by pouring that stuff into a blender or if you have a high powered um, stick blender, you can use that too. <clears throat> so once the ingredients have been liquefied, strain it. I recommend using cheesecloth here or a coffee filter because there's a whole bunch of like grit. Yeah, kind of particulate because <laughs> you just In blended it. a bunch of shit. Yeah. And then add your sweetener to taste. And once you have done that, you... Uh, you can now say the potion consecration spell that we gave uh, a few minutes ago and your potion is ready to drink. Yeah. So if you're not consuming this within a couple of days, freeze this in portions and then defrost as desired. I've been drinking this the whole time for the podcast and it's fantastic. I super love it. But I think I want to take the rest of it and and freeze it into basically shot glass sized um, amounts. Large ass ice cubes. Yeah. Yeah. So that I can kind of like use it as like, oh, this has been a particularly rough like day. A like a boost. Spell. Yeah. Like a boost. <laughs> Yeah, or if I know that I'm going to have a day where things are going to be, you know, I'm going to want that extra like energy that I'm going to, yeah. you know, use the bonus that. zhuzh as it were. Yeah. 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 And that's it. a great way to do this um, sort of potion uh, because it is more work than a lot of spells that we do on here, particularly like kitchen witchery spells. So, um, you know, it's nice to sort of spread that work over several magical bits. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so it is time for the reading of lists. So normally for correspondences, we write um, or we read the correspondences that are associated with the particular thing. But Kitchen Witchery is kind of like a general catch all. So what I've done instead here is chosen some categories that are common categories to use for magical spells and added in a bunch of correspondences associated with those. And um, I'm going to go ahead and read those. These are actually quite long. Uh, I'm only reading a few from each particular category here. And if you want to have the full unadulterated list. Um, that's something that you can use by um, adding, by getting on our Patreon. Uh, we have a Patreon tier for Horn and Cauldron Podcast Coven. And with that, you not only get access to a Discord, um, but we also have all of the Book of Shadows pages that you can either save or print or whatever that have the full list of the correspondences, notes from each episode, and the spells. Yeah. So the first one that we have is love. So associated with love are um, apples, celery, cherries, and parsley. Uh, for abundance, that's dill, mint, and orange. Protection and cleansing, basil, ginger, and onion. Energy and magic enhancing, chamomile, coffee, and pepper. Healing, uh, garlic, lavender, and rosemary. And then lastly, or not lastly, I lied. Uh, <laughs> next is it's luck. It's the last on that particular page. Uh, luck. Um, and that's anise, mustard, and orange. And then lastly, spiritual and psychic powers, uh, clove, lotus, and saffron. So, so some of the items that I read aloud are more associated with savory things in particular, like garlic or mustard. Um, it's pretty common to think of potions as like a sweet sort of thing, but you can do potions that are savory, just like you can have, you know, broth like we talked about earlier. 
So don't be afraid to sort of combine things in there. If you're making a soup, there's no reason to not turn that broth into a potion, basically. Uh, and also, I didn't include any of the items that were associated um, in those spells there. So are strawberries for luck and they're in that list? Yes, but I figured I'd give you some extra bonus and by not reading those. So, uh, <laughs> so those are the correspondences. <coughs> okay, so there was there was a bunch of correspondences. It was a bunch of correspondences. There was a bunch of correspondences, and I, I wasn't there for all of that. It's fine. It's okay. Hey, doesn't matter. Um, if you want all of them, they're in the thing that you already talked about. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's uh, let's. Give a little shout out to our patrons, uh, Alan, Miranda, Helena, Jeff, Alexa, and Adrian. Stay awesome, guys, because you're awesome. And you help us do a little bit better every time. Which, yep. You know, I mean, Thank you the goal. very much. Yeah, you guys are the best. Uh, so uh, next episodes, let's go over that real quick. Uh, we've got Pub Chat episode eight, which will come out on the 16th. Submit your questions. If you have a question for that, we'll see what, what's going on with that one. I never know what's happening. It's fine. Um, and then the next, um, full length episode is going to be episode number 39, which will come out on the 23rd. And that's types of Fay, which is quite interesting. So yeah, that'll, that'll be, that'll be a fun one. Yeah. And then and if you want to kind of preload on that yeah. one, you can listen to our previous episode on the Fay, which, um, is working with the Fae. It's sort of an intro to that. And that is episode nine. Ooh, early episode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, this month, uh, in the month of May, uh, we will be at Fanime 2022 in San Jose this year. Uh, and we'll be hosting a live panel. So if you're attending that, uh, don't forget to check us out. And uh, that panel will also be a uh, a full length episode of the mm -hmm. podcast. That episode will be magic in anime. So we're going to be looking at five different ep uh, series of anime. Uh, we watch the first season of each, and mm -hmm. we are going to address the sort of specific magics that are being used in it, both as described in the anime as well as with like whatever historical, practical, or realistic connection that has to any particular magic uh, based on the information or research that we have and know. So that'll be a real interesting one. We're watching some pretty dope animes for that. Yeah. It'll basically um, be a lot like how we talk about magic and media in the pub chats. Yeah. Just like an, just like an in-depth. It's just a hyper magic yeah. and media focusing on, on um, uh, um, five anime. Yeah. yeah, and the different types of magic that they use within each one. Yeah, <laughs> so it'll 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 be good. It'll be interesting. We chose these anime you know with, with a very specific purpose. Yeah. So uh, if you're there for that, uh, uh, join us. And uh, if you aren't able to make it, which is incredibly understandable and gangster, um, stay tuned because that episode will come out where we should be recording that or we will be recording that live at the con. So we're, uh, it'll be a bit of a shorter formed episode, like a little bit shorter of an episode, but we'll have room for uh, fan questions. Yeah. Um, which will be interesting to answer questions. Um, live questions. Live. We'll see, we'll see what happens. It's, it's, <laughs> From I'm very, people in person. I'm very, yeah, it's crazy. I'm, I'm both very excited and dreading every waking moment of it. After so two years of Panama, soon. we're finally get to, gonna get to be in rooms with strangers. Yeah. 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 So, we'll, you know. Ah. But, yeah. So, that'll be gangster. But, yeah. So, this was Kitchen Witchery 102 Potions. Um... It, it was an interesting look at potions with regard to it being a form of kitchen witchery, uh, you know, because it is. So um, either way, I have been John Norgrove. This has been Julie Norgrove. This has been The Horn. And Cauldron Podcast. Podcast. And we will catch you guys next time. Stay magical, folks. Yeah. And don't forget, breathe in self-confidence and breathe out self-doubt.